morning, tubers. Madam Roy back again using a new uh, selfie stick that I purchased actually about a month ago now from uh, Aldi and uh, totally forgot I kept it in my uh, drawer and never really used it. Um, just want to see if it makes these videos a little bit smoother. And now you, now you can kind of see me I'm a little bit further away. But uh, see, this is the 31st of October, which means, yes, it is Halloween. And uh, it is very cold here right now. It's about 10 a.m. And we're sitting at right about 49 degrees with about, they said like 80% humidity. So you get a little bit of warmth from the humidity, but to be honest with you, it doesn't, it doesn't really help that much when it's this cold out. Um, we are not going to be participating in Halloween events today. Um, we're all on diets. We're all trying to get better, as I've said, you know, get fit. So we've decided to close up shop and basically go to the movies tonight. Now, that's controversial for some of you guys. You're like, hey, Matt, how can you not participate in Halloween? Well, you know what? It's for us. We're doing this for us because we have a lot of that candy left over. Believe it or not, it's going to go into our bellies, and I don't want that to happen. Let's switch over here because I see somebody's uh, weed whacking back that way. Um, other than that, there's not too much else going on today. Like I said, we're going to go to the movies. We're going to wind up seeing that movie Geostorm, even though I'm not too thrilled about seeing that. I've heard a lot of uh, negative about it. It's not that good a movie. Very typical disaster type movie. But you know what? It's about the only thing I want to see. Mom and I did go and see, however, Little Shop of Horrors the other day. That was awesome. They, it was the old one from 1986 with Rick Moranis and Vincent Gardenia, Ellen Green, and special appearances by John Candy, Steve Martin, and the legendary Bill Murray. And if you've never seen that, uh, I would highly recommend it. It's not going to be in the theaters for much longer. It's just like in a special event in our Cinemark Theater. We have what are called Fathom Events. And that allows them to show an older movie um, basically in the theater. Now, the really cool part of this is if you guys do wind up catching it at your local theater, um, there's an alternate ending. Um, Frank Oz, the creator of the, the movie or the director, uh, actually was able to find in his archives the original ending. And the original ending has a very, very, very different uh, sequence of events to it. So I'm not going to spoil it because that wouldn't be any fun, right? If I spoiled it, then you guys wouldn't want to go see the movie. So definitely check it out. It's called Little Shop of Horrors. It came out originally in 1986, and it got good reviews when it came out back then. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I really want to tell you guys what happens, but I'm not going to because I know everybody will get really upset because some of you guys are probably going to go see this. And it's going to be in theaters, I believe, for at least another couple of days. It's in Cinemarks. I think certain um, Regal cinemas have it too, but mainly the Cinemarks. Uh, Trying to remember Regal, uh, Regal, Cinemark, and then um, can't think of there's There's one that's out in the West. I think it's called Tinseltown is the same thing as Cinemark. So if it's in your theaters, definitely check it out. Well, you know what, guys? I've been outside long enough right now. I need to go get a coat. I'm going to pause this vlog, catch up with you guys on the flip side. Actually, before I go in, I'm going to show you that we are going to be bike riding today because a lot of people have been asking why I haven't been uploading my steps through to Facebook. Well, that's because I really haven't been doing too many steps. Mom and I have been basically bike riding. And I figured last night I would go ahead and just leave the bikes on the back of the truck um, that way we could just go ahead and uh, go today. Now, what I did to securely um, make sure these bikes didn't get stolen is I took one of the uh, bike chains, wrapped it around the tires, then around the bike frames, and then I went ahead and bolted or padlocked that to another chain that's actually attached to a chain that's in here. So, I mean, this thing is definitely not going anywhere. Hopefully, we won't have to do that when we're on the trip. I really, it really gets annoying after a while, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, I mean, the bikes are okay. Mom really needs to get a new bike. Hers is this Murray Bayberry mountain bike. It's the same one she's used for a while. But as you can see, it's really getting worn out. The, um, the paint's starting to peel on it. Uh, the tires are still in good shape. But you see the shock towers are starting to rust and rot in, in places. And the thing that drives me nuts about women's bikes, and I don't know, 
how they think you're supposed to put these on a uh, on a bike rack is if you noticed here my dad actually fabricated this metal bar that allows us to actually put it on the bike rack because most men's bikes use this crossbar where you can just go ahead and mount it there the women's bikes have the angled bar unfortunately you would not be able to properly put this bike on without this added bar we've tried and you can kind of get it on at this point but the bike becomes front heavy and then it would lean too far down and the tire would scrape the uh, ground so if any of you guys are um, bike enthusiasts out there tell me why and how they expect <laughs> women's bikes to be able to be um, mounted to a regular bike rack I just do not see how it can be properly done without a fabricated bar like all right done there. sitting outside real quick enjoying a cup of coffee I uh, uh, just wanted to give you a uh, status update on our quest for a healthier lifestyle, which is what I'm going to be calling it. We are doing really, really well. Uh, Mom and I have been exercising religiously about five days a week, um, sometimes six, just depends on how we feel. Mom's back was hurting here and my knee was hurting a little bit the other day, so probably tomorrow we're going to take a break. Uh, but today Mom and I are going to go for a bike ride on the bike path. And I just tell you, can't tell you how much better I feel right now. Um, the latest thing that's really come up is, I know I've said this before in different vlogs, but I am a diabetic. And um, for many years, my blood sugar was fairly high. Uh, A1C is really a good indication of where you are. And for about a year or two, my A1C was at 7.8, which is actually pretty high. I mean, when you start hitting near 8.0, you can actually start getting damage done to your body. So that was part of my motivation to uh, get physically fit. Now that we've been on this diet for about a month and a half now, I've noticed my numbers drastically reduced. I've actually been taking, taking off one medication. I'm still on the other one. Um, but give you an example, I used to wake up in the mornings to blood sugar, fasting blood sugar being in the 125, 135 range. And then if I eat something, my blood sugar might spike to 180 to 200, just depending on what I ate. Now, I'm waking up in the morning uh, with blood sugars in the 90s and 80s, and this morning I woke up and it was 72, which is actually a little bit too low, so I need to back off even more on my medication. Um, but I ate a normal breakfast, I had two bran muffins and some coffee, which all have sugar in it. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to check my blood sugar an hour after I ate. That's basically, at least in my body, when my body tends to spike to the highest that it's going to. And without any medication this morning, my blood sugar tested at 114. So that means my body is actually functioning properly. In other words, it's able to process its own sugar via my insulin right now, which means I may eventually reverse this condition. Not not totally. Once you're once you're diabetic, you're always you always have a predisposition to it. But when I had my A1C tested, I'm actually in what they call the pre-diabetic range now. My last A1C was at 6.2. Basically, depending on what chart you go by, 5.0 to 6.0 is usually no normal for a normal person. 6.1 to 6.4 they consider pre-diabetic and anything over 6.4 you are a diabetic and this was actually taken um, this A1C for those of you that don't know is a test to, uh, that they do to test your blood sugar over a three month span so for half of that time I was actually not being that good so theoretically my A1C may even be a little bit lower now reason I'm telling you guys this is I'm sure there are other others of you that watch my channel they're probably in the same boat that I was overweight maybe pre-diabetic diabetic it doesn't matter which I was actually in that diabetic range I was not pre-diabetic I was full-blown diabetic now with the exercise the uh, watching my diet cutting back and losing just the 10 15 pounds that I lost I've actually reversed that from being full-blown diabetic to being in the pre-diabetic range. So for those of you that think you're too far gone, that you're never gonna be able to lose the weight, don't ever say that because I had been there before. I had been over 400 pounds at one time and I never want to get back there again. I, I had lost all hope at, at one point in my life. But now I realize that with God's help, 
with my support system and with a little mental willpower, I can lose the weight and so can you. Talk to you guys a little bit later. All right, tubers. So I just left the thrift store, and boy, did I come away with something good. This is sale day, so you know everything is 25% off. So I will show you the price they had on this. $19.98, so 25% off of that. Made it about $15.88. Let's just say $16 after tax. And this computer is, from what I can tell, what is the box says. It's an HP Pavilion P7-15. 34 PC. It's got a AMD quad core A8 5000 series processor, uh, eight gigabytes of memory, a one terabyte hard drive. Now I have not confirmed that the memory or the hard drive are in there. I'll have to do that when I get home. You know what? Let's pull this out now. What do you say, guys? I have some time, but just show you what else it has. It's got the built-in um, Radeon HD 756OD. This is an APU, so basically the graphics and the processor are all built into one. Go ahead and open it up here real quick. It has definitely been used, but it, it looks like it is in the original box. They got all the cables and everything down there. Looks like it's got some paperwork. So <laughs> Looks like it's a whole bunch of power cables. You can see there's a Ethernet cable under there. But you guys are here to see this. I'm hoping I can open this up. It doesn't really have a thumb screw. I could tell right off the bat, though, that somebody put in an ad, put on an add-in graphics card, so that's really a plus. It's got a couple of USB 3.0 ports, some 2.0 ports. There's your built-in um, VGA and DVI. The optical audio out, which is a nice touch, and then a couple more USB ports on the uh, back there. Let me go ahead and show you guys the front here. Again, it's really hard to do this one-handed. As you can see, it is definitely the computer that the box suggests. Oh, wow. I didn't even notice this. This, if you can see by the sun, is a Beats audio system. Got a memory card reader up top. It looks like says a optical drive let's see just a regular dvd burner not a blu-ray that one's not uh, occupied and you see it does say it's an a8 let me get a screwdriver see if i can pop this open real quick and we'll see if uh, all the goodies are inside all right Talk to well i got the screw loosened let's pull the cover off here and yes it does appear we do have the one terabyte hard drive in there i'm hoping that is the one eight gigabyte stick Yes, it does appear that is an 8 gigabyte stick of memory, so awesome. I do actually have everything this computer is supposed to have. With the exception of that add-on graphics card, I'm going to see if I can figure out what that is. Uh, it is... Does not say on the sticker right there, so I'll have to check this out later, but that's awesome, guys. I cannot believe I picked this up for $15.88. Again, we're going to say $16 after shipping, but or after shipping, after tax. But yeah, that is awesome. Definitely going to check this out when I get home, and I will catch you guys on That's the flip side. a little bit side. better. I noticed that my camera lens was dirty. I hope it didn't, <laughs> I hope my videos didn't look that bad this morning, but we'll go with it. Um, I'm about to head home right now. It's driving me crazy. They got like five people here again from uh, a charity. I'm not going to name the charity, but they're here like five days a week, and I give them money when I can, but I mean, they're almost like what I would call charity snipers. I, you know, I'm all for giving money to the poor, you know, helping out different charities, but these people are taking it to a ridiculous level. If you don't, when I went in the store, I had one trying to get to me, so I walk in, get my purchase done, and I walk out, they're like, oh, you walk so fast, I couldn't talk to you. I'm like, uh, already, already donate to your charity, and they're like, okay, have a nice day, which is fine, but then as I'm trying to film this video, another one sees me and starts to walk over i it just gets too ridiculous i mean i realize there, it's tough times now and you know people do need to give i give on i give on a regular basis as much as i can but there is a, such a term as oversaturation. When you overly saturate one specific area, you're actually going to be making less and less money via donations because people are just going to get really, really um, annoyed. And that's really the best term because at this point, I don't even want to give these people any more money because they are just constantly bugging, bugging, bugging. And 
I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just me, but it just really, really irritates the crap out of me. I'm sorry. I didn't want to be a little rant here, but that it's just something that they need to back off a little bit. I mean, there are numerous other shopping centers in this area that they could uh, be canvassing at. Now, maybe this one is the friendliest to, to their cause. I don't know. But, I mean, there are, I can name at least three more that are in the vicinity within two miles of here that they could probably just get about as much money as they do here. So it'd be nice if they would just kind of switch off once in a while. Well, I'm going to head home. Uh, we've decided that we are going to go out to eat tonight. Um, unfortunately, there's no way around it because we're not going to be handing out candy this year. Um, we're going to go to Applebee's and we're going to go see Geostorm, which uh, I'm kind of curious about. I've heard the ratings weren't that great, but still, I'd really, really like to um, try and try it out. You know what? Sometimes the uh, the people that review the movies don't really don't really know what they're doing, I'll be honest with you, because I've seen some really good movies in the past that the critics gave horrible reviews to. I'm going to pause this vlog for a little bit, and I will catch you guys on the flip side. All right, tubers, well, I am back home. You can see I have the PC uh, that I just picked up all hooked up to the setup down here. Let's do a uh, smoke test, see if this thing actually works. So, smoke test! So far, so good. And I was able to hook up both monitors. I don't know if I hooked them up properly, though. No, oh, I guess not. I guess I haven't flipped, but that's okay. We'll just use this one. Oh, check this out, guys. I didn't even look at this. It's got, uh, under this flap here, it's got two more uh, high-speed USB 3.0 ports on the front. And it's got a, a microphone and a Beats Audio port on the front. Well, it's a regular headphone jack, but it's part of the Beats Audio system this has. And I can see it's booting up. I'm going to be very careful because I don't know if there's anybody's personal information on here or not. So I'm going to pause the video for a minute and then I'll get back to you once it's booted. If it boots. All right, tubers. Well, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to boot into the operating system because somebody does have it password protected. But before I end this vlog, I'm going to try to go into the BIOS so you can see exactly what this does have. And hopefully it matches what the All box right, so says. Apparently on these newer HPs, you have to hit the escape key. And then you can actually go into the BIOS, which here, let's see, computer setup is F10. And let's go into system information. You can see it is indeed a uh, AMD A8. This is actually a 5500 uh, with the APU. Processor speed clocked at 3200 megahertz or 3.2 gigahertz. See, it's got uh, four megabytes of level two cache one, or two megabytes of level one cache. And as you can see, it does show it has the eight gigabyte, it has one eight gigabyte stick of memory, which I think I'm going to change out. I have a use of for this stick in another system. I'm just going to go ahead and put four two gig sticks in to basically do the same thing. And you can see the model on this computer is P7-1534. Let's see, go over to storage options. Uh, yeah, now let's see, device configuration, there we go, and it does, it does indeed have the uh, Seagate one terabyte uh, conventional hard drive, so that is awesome, guys, so for 15 bucks, total score here, hope you guys really enjoyed the vlog today, please continue to remember to like and subscribe, and as always, have a blessed day, everybody.